Howdy friends and followers, I am back in the workshop and today I'm going to do a follow-up video about the $126 banjo I got off eBay a couple weeks ago. I posted that video and uh, I would mentioned I need some work. Well, I've done some work to it and I uh, would like to show you guys what I've done so far. But first, I'd just like to say, if you like what I do on this channel, go ahead and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I got some cool giveaways coming up this winter that's gonna be available to subscribers only. So go ahead and subscribe if you like what I do. And I just describe this channel as musical miscellany. It's just everything. Anyway, first things first. Oh, look at this. Remember during the unboxing video, I said I wish it would have come with a case? Well, it did. The, uh, after I got it and posted that video, so like a week or you know whatever had gone by since I purchased it off of eBay, the seller emailed me and he said, hey man, sorry, I, I didn't find it previously, but I found the case, Do you, would you want it? And I was like, uh, yeah. And I figured he'd want to split the shipping or something. So I said, hey, do you just want me to split the shipping with you? Cause you know, you gotta ship a whole nother box for the case. And he said, no, nah, it's my mistake. I'll just send it to you. So he sent me this for free. So I now have the case to the banjo. And of course, this case is not, uh, you know, it's a, it's not a super protective case. It's got like this kind of um, lining like this inside and stuff, but it certainly does a job of, of holding it and, uh, you know, uh, allowing you to, to take it, to transport it with you. So I'm gonna set that down here and uh, I'm gonna pull the banjo out. And, but first, I wanted to show you one cool thing about the case here. So, inside the case is this pocket, right? By the way, that's that's something I printed off. That's not anything to do with it. But inside the case is this pocket here. Well, I got it. I opened this pocket. And inside this pocket is an extra string. And it appears to be the, um, the high string, which, remember, that broke when I was tuning it up. Wish I would have had that. I'm not sure what that is. Something. A wrench to, uh, looks like this can be used to tighten the head and then it's got a screwdriver on the other end. There's a wrench in there. There is three finger picks, three finger picks, hopefully you can see those, and a standard guitar pick. And last but not least, this is one of the lug, the lug nuts from one of the drum lugs. So, um, I had mentioned in the unboxing video that all the lugs were there, and I was wrong about that. There is one lug missing on the banjo head. So that's probably the nut for the one that's missing. The lug probably broke, but the seller, the original owner, probably held on to that nut. Okay, so first things first, that lug right there is missing, and I didn't notice that when I did the unboxing, but there is one lug missing. The rest of them are all there. So just that one is missing, and that's clearly where that nut came from. Um, but see, let's talk about a little bit of what I did to it. So first things first, I took the resonator off and uh, looked at the, the truss rod in, or the rod in here. Um, by the way, I took that little plate off there that says steel reinforced neck and there is no truss rod adjust screw there or bolt. That's literally just a plate. Um, so, but it does have like two nuts in here that, that will move it in opposite directions. So I tightened it up as best that I could. Um, I went around the drum and just made sure, I don't know how to tune one of these drums. So I just made sure that none of them were loose. Um, which none of them were, well, one of them, a couple of them might have had a little bit of, I tightened them just a little bit, but I didn't do a whole lot to the drum head because I'm just not sure about that yet. And then down here, there's a little screw that you can use that can kind of shim the neck up or down a little bit. And I shimmed it up as high as I could go and I got it to where it's about even with the top of the drum. And realistically, it probably needs to be just a bit higher, um, but that might be a little more work than I want to do right now. I, I might do that later. This bridge is adjustable and you can tip it downward. What I had read, said that you should tip it downward just a little bit towards the drum and it'll help with the volume. So I did that. Um, and then I changed the strings on it. So remember this thing had mismatched strings on it and they actually, all the strings that were on it were ball head strings, which is kind of weird because that's usually a guitar string. Um, but you can see there, it has the hooks for the loop ends. So I bought just a standard set of Ernie Ball um, tender banjo strings. And so it's got banjo strings on it now. And so I put those on it and that seemed to make a big difference with the tension as well. I don't know that those other strings were even gauged right. Um, the next thing, the nut, and I had mentioned this in the unboxing video, the nut was really high. I mean, it really needed some help. So I recut the nut and um, I did that using my uh, Stumac nut files. 
So my wife had got me a set of those, like, what was that? I don't know. I think it was last year. Because uh, I had complained about how hard nuts were. And she went out there, she actually got me a set of those too, Mac. They're not cheap, but she got me a set of those. And so I used those and it was really nice. Just cut the nut beautifully. And um, the strings dropped in there really well. Now, it could honestly probably go just a little bit lower. I may still tweak it a little more, but I was being conservative and kind of, you know, filing out, check the string, filing out. So um, that's where I got it to, but it made a huge difference in the playability of the banjo. So, you know, new strings, tightening up all the, all the uh, various things, recutting the nut. And then finally, the old bridge, when I took that old bridge off of there, it was really high. It was like five eighths of an inch about high, which is, pretty high. So I checked out some other ones from some of my cigar box guitar projects. And this one was closer to a half inch. Um, so I put this one on there and just grooved it. Again, I used my nut files to groove that so that the strings drop in there. And hopefully you can see that. There we go. And so I, I put that new bridge on there. And then, um, and then after I put the bridge on there, it was still pretty high. So I took it and I took one of my uh, files and I just real carefully kind of shaved it down a little bit. And I you know, shave a few, a little bit off and then try it again and then shave a little bit off. And I probably shaved off a 16th or so, I'm guessing. Not a whole lot, but it really did make it put the action down where it's a lot more playable. And so those little things, I mean, that cost me, other than the set of strings, which I think were about six bucks or so, other than the set of strings, it didn't cost me anything. Everything else I just had, right? I had the bridge um, and the rest of it was just tightening and, you know, elbow grease, so to speak. So for just an investment of about another six dollars, uh, this banjo got surprisingly more playable. So I'm very pleased with uh, how this came out now, and I love the fact that I have the case for it now. This makes me like super happy. So this baby, again, I am not a banjo player, never played a banjo in my life, but uh, let's see if I can get some tones out of it. Not that impressive. My banjo skills are certainly not there yet, but I can make some noise with it. Um, I'm thinking at this point, I probably need to tighten up the drum head a little. It just sounds a little like flappy to me um, using my completely not uh, uh, technical words here, but so it may need that next. I probably still have some work to do to it. I might have to cut the neck just a little bit more, but overall, I mean, Honestly, guys, after after the unboxing video, I was kind of thinking to myself, I got ripped off. I wasn't like sad that I did it or anything, but I was like, uh, $126 for a banjo that's barely playable. But the case showed up, that changed things a lot. And then with just a few little tweaks and a new set of strings, getting it to where you can actually play it. I don't know, it's changed how I think about it. So anyway, here we go. Here is the follow-up to the $126 banjo. I might do a little more work on her and get her tweaked in, but certainly there's that wonderful Made in Japan stamp we see on the back. Certainly, I'm feeling a lot better about this one. So, hey, I'm a banjo man. <laughs>